Good morning. Thank you so much for logging in today and uh, looking forward to another morning devotions here with you. And uh, hopefully you had a good night's rest here and uh, um, everything, uh, everything's going well. You got your coffee, you have your, uh, maybe you already ate breakfast or, or whatnot, but uh, hopefully you're, you're ready for this morning's message. And uh, I am Still hoping to go outside, and yet that overcast sky just kind of came over and uh, closed everything up. But uh, thank you so much for logging in. And if, as you do log in, make sure you you uh, uh, say hello and message as we go. And I'm going to do a little something different, and I'll, I'll make message. Uh, I'll reiterate this a little bit later. But uh, for I'm going to be doing a, a giveaway of some Starbucks gift cards, and so uh, I'll pick. Three random messages uh, on the on the or comments rather on, on the board there, and I'll be giving out Starbucks gift cards. Maybe you get a cup of coffee for your morning coffee check, and so uh, uh, make sure you comment down there. We'll, we'll be handing out those uh, Starbucks gift cards uh, to you. Uh, we're going to be in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter number four. Good morning, Miss Helen. Good morning, Brother Romy. Thank you so much for logging in. Uh, we're Hebrews chapter number four this morning, and uh, I'm going to do an early coffee check right now. I'll probably do another one in a little bit. Oh, that's good. And i uh, got my coffee for the morning. Hebrews chapter number four, and we're going to be going, looking through verses uh, one to nine this morning. Hebrews chapter four. Uh, good morning, Miss Nikki. And uh, amen. Coffee ready, Bible ready, ready to go. All right. Good morning, Miss Bonnie. Verse number one, the Bible says, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. And uh, good morning, uh, Elena. Uh, verse number two, it says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter in my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place on the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all uh, his works. Verse number five says this, and in his place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, today, after so a long time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. And then notice verse number nine. It says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. And uh, uh, I've mentioned already that uh, in chapters three and four, there's this thread that kind of uh, is sown between them in this idea of rest and the promise of rest being given to God's people. And in chapter three, we see the historical ramifications of this rest and what the children of Israel chose to do with the promise. And because of their hardened hearts, because of unbelief, uh, they did not receive that rest that was given to them. And uh, I, I, may, I alluded to it yesterday, but I'm gonna uh, kind of, talk about it a little bit more today, but not receiving God's word or not having the faith is, is not simply a, an issue of can't, it's an issue of won't. You see, uh, if you go back to chapter three and verse number eight, he mentions harden not your hearts. Uh, that idea of hardening not your hearts means that you are not allowing your heart to be softened to uh, the word of God. We see it again uh, at the end of, uh, uh, in chapter 15 of, uh, or, I'm sorry, chapter three of verse 15, where he says, uh, uh, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation. We see it again in uh, uh, verse, uh, in chapter, 
chapter 4, as he talks about it in uh, verse number 7, today after a long, uh, a long time, as it is said, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You see, the idea of not receiving the word of God has an issue more of your heart being hardened or choosing not to accept what God's word says. And uh, we see a warning kind of following after chapter three into verse number one. It says, let us therefore fear. Now that word fear is not the word be afraid. Although it does have the, the, the background connotations of it, but it has the more idea of, of having concern, true, uh, if, how can I put it? Uh, the same way you would be concerned about uh, your kids not washing their hands before they eat, or uh, the same concern that you would have with, in, in fact, uh, right now, the same concern that we have with making sure we're sanitized when we go out in public places so that we don't pick up something that we shouldn't. He says that we ought to have this fear, this true concern, if you will, um, lest a promise being left us of entering the rest. He's saying, let's have a concern within our own lives that we don't lose out on the promises of God. And the promises in particular that he's talking about is that promise of rest. And he says, uh, um, here in verse number one, he says, lest a promise being left us entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Now, this seem to come short of it is almost a callback to Romans where it says that uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, what greater sin is there than the sin of unbelief that causes us to come short of all the things of God? And so how important it is for us to, uh, uh, good morning, Miss Danny. Thank you for letting me know she logged on here. And uh, Miss Mateo as well, thank you for tuning in. How important it is for us to make sure that we truly believe so we don't fall short of the blessings and gifts of God. Uh, verse number two says, for unto us was the gospel preached. And I thank God for the fact that the gospel was preached to me. I've made mention of it already. Uh, 1986 on Meekland Avenue, the gospel was preached by Wade Roten, Pastor Roten, as he preached the gospel to me. And uh, then also by Bob Guinan. And they made sure that I receive the gospel. But here's the thing. The gospel can be preached to you, but what do you do with it? We see here in verse, verse number two, it says, as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being given so, something so great as the word of God and it not profit you? It not benefit your life? For some people, they'd say, well, I just didn't see the benefits. Or uh, to me, it just didn't, the evidence wasn't there. And my answer would be, then your faith wasn't there. Because faith, uh, as we'll find, especially later in, in the book of Hebrews, faith is the substance of things, not, uh, uh, the substance of, and I always, I always mess up that verse, I don't know why, but in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verse number one, it says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And if we have that faith, the evidence will be there. If we have that faith, we'll begin to see all the blessings of God uh, within our life. And he says that uh, the word of God was preached, but it didn't profit them. Well, how then is the word of God profited within our life? It says, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You see the difference between those that uh, believe the word of God and those that don't believe the word of God is this issue of faith. It's the word of God mixed with, uh, with faith and how important it is for us to truly put our faith into what's being uh, read and spoken of. Um, and just so we're clear, faith doesn't necessarily mean we don't have doubt. Now I tell you what, the less doubt we have, the stronger our faith will be. But faith is simply believing even though we can't see, even though we don't understand what's happening. And so how important it is for us to have faith in the word of God and to be concerned 
with those that don't have this faith. Be concerned with those who have not received this promise of rest. Verse number three says, for we which uh, have believed do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter in my, into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Now, I think at this point, it's important for us to truly define what rest means because I think we can mix it up. For the children of Israel, this rest was the promised land. And we saw historically that they weren't able to enter into the promised land because they didn't believe that, they, that God could do it for them. They were afraid of the giants that were in the land. They saw that their skill was, was so much greater than their own. And, and they just didn't believe that God can do it. And because of that, God made them wander in the wilderness. Uh, however, that's not where that picture or that symbolism ends. It, it's not simply the lo location of the promised land. It's also what it means for the children of Israel, what it means for us. And the first thing that I think it means ultimately is the peace of God. To be able to enter into his rest is to be able to have peace with God. Because what happens is when we enter into his rest, we're no longer at odds with his word. We're no longer uh, choosing to deny his word and we're able to enter into that great peace that only he can bring us and how important it is for us to be able to find that peace even in the midst of all all the turmoil that goes around us and by the way peace has been a thread that that's woven through the book of Hebrews as well uh, so the first attribute of this rest is peace the second thing is freedom you say, why do you, why do you say freedom? Well, the passage in chapter 3 was derived from a, a psalm in Psalm 95, and I'd like to go there for just a moment. Would you hold your place here in the book of Hebrews, and would you go with me to Psalm 95? Psalm 95. By the way, quick question, how many chapters are in the book of Psalms? How many chapters are in the book of Psalms? You can go ahead and, if you want, you can, you can listen in the comments there. How many chapters are in the book of Psalms? We're going to Psalm 95. Uh, there are, some of you might be saying 150. Um, there are zero chapters in the book of Psalms. There are 150 Psalms. And so uh, uh, keep that thought in mind here. Um, Psalm 95, now this is, a, and you remember our study from yesterday uh, in chapter uh, uh, 3 of Hebrews, but I want, I want you to read this uh, starting off of verse number 1. It says, O come, let us sing unto the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise, um, make a joyful noise with him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. And that's what I do best. I do trick questions the best, Miss Elena. Uh, verse number four, in his hands are deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. Uh, verse number five, the sea is his and he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Verse number six, oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Now, I want you to notice this in, in verse number seven. For he is our God, and we are his people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if we hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation, and as is in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is the people that do err in their heart. And they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Doesn't that sound eerily familiar to Hebrews chapter three? Well, that's because the writer of Hebrews uh, took this and expounded upon this this psalm here. 
And, uh, but there's something that is very important for us to see with this rest. And uh, in, in this passage, we see some uh, attributes of what this rest truly means. And we find great freedom in this chapter, in this psalm rather. And it says here in verse number one, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. We find two areas of freedom that's given to us in, in, in this psalm. The first thing that we find is the freedom to sing unto the Lord or to worship him. When we enter into his rest, we have that great freedom to worship and to adore God for who he is and what he's done within our life. But not only that, we have the freedom of salvation. We've been saved from the Egypt of the world. We've been saved from the bondage of sin. We've been saved uh, from hell as our final bondage place. And praise God for that. That gives us all the reason why we ought to sing praises to his name. And so we are given great freedom in this rest. Not only that, but we see here... Uh, um, uh, not only the freedom, but if you go back to our text in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter number four, Hebrews chapter number four, in still trying to define this rest, we find peace with God. We find freedom to uh, uh, worship or freedom to sing and freedom in salvation, which tears us away from sin and uh, uh, all the, the plagues that come with that. But also we find the blessing of faith. We find here in, in verse number three, he says this, for we which have believed do enter into this rest. You see, when we give faith or when we yield our faith to what God has given to us, and you say, well, where does this faith come from? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so when we yield our faith to the word of God, uh, what happens is we are given as a blessing this rest. And for some of us, that's so needy for us right now to be able to have this rest for us. Now, one thing you'll notice I haven't said is this rest is not relaxation. This rest is not freedom from work, freedom from uh, uh, doing things. It is, there's still stuff that needs to go on. However, there's rest in the midst of it. And so we find that there is a blessing that comes when we give our faith. We also find that it's the will of God. Rest is the will of God. You say, well, how do you say it's the will of God? Because we understand that uh, this rest comes through salvation. It comes through the, uh, 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 the yielding of faith in the word of God. And understanding that that's part of the will of God. Because Jesus, as he came here, he was not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And when we come to repentance, when we yield ourselves to God, we then are able to have this rest within our life and how important it is for us. And ultimately, ultimately after this life ends, after we're done uh, uh, working in this life, we will find ourselves ultimately in heaven, the ultimate rest. And uh, you say, Pastor, that's where we're just not gonna do anything. We're just gonna sing. Uh, 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 we're just gonna play harps and sing and that's all we're gonna do. No, we're gonna live a life in heaven. There's gonna be so much uh, uh, that we're gonna do in heaven. There's, we're gonna be working in heaven, but it's gonna be without that feeling of labor. It's gonna be without that feeling of, uh, of exhaustion. And so we can give ourselves wholly to that. And so when I say rest, those are the things that I'm talking about. Now he says here in verse uh, number four, he says, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Now this rest is a, an example of what Jesus did back in the book of Genesis when he, for six days, spoke the worlds into existence. He spoke everything into existence, the stars, the, 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 the sun, the, the, the light, the darkness, the sea, the, the, the animals, everything was spoken into existence. And on the seventh day, he rested. Now, I want to make this distinct, distinction. Remember, he wasn't resting because he was tired. 
He was resting in the midst of his work because his work would continue on the next day. He would continue to, to do things and continue to work with us and walk with us and, and do different things. However, on the seventh day, the Sabbath, if we will, that was the day he rested. Good morning, Nate. Thank you so much for logging on. And uh, coffee's not needed, but I, I think it will be there, Miss Nikki, uh, definitely. And by the way, that's a good time for another coffee check here. Uh, all right, and by the way, I did say, for those that are uh, commenting, Mark, you're absolutely right. Technically, there really are no chapters in the Bible. Technically, you're right. Uh, the chapters were done by a, uh, a monk who wanted to make the Bible reading a little more uh, ex ex accessible, easy to find different passages. And so, Mark, you are definitely correct on that. Um, you've tricked the trickster here. Uh, here we go. Uh, we find here that this rest was a, a picture of what God did in the book of Genesis and how important it is for us to take time aside not necessarily because we need the rest, but time aside to honor God for what he's done for us, honor God for how he's blessed us, honor God for um, his, uh, just his word and his salvation, and really take time. I think heaven in itself is uh, just one long Sabbath day that's never going to end. And I think that's so important for us to just keep that thought in mind. And by the way, just, just an aside here, that's why it's so important that we're faithful to church. Because church is an opportunity for us to pull ourselves away. It's an opportunity to find rest in Him. No, we're not completely relax, relaxing. We're still doing stuff. However, in that, we are taking time to think and ponder and consider who God is. And... Uh, and uh, good morning, Mom. Thank you for logging in uh, here this morning. And Miss Elena is drinking Lily with a spoonful of sugar. Interesting. That is interesting. Uh, verse number six, it says this, Seeing therefore, uh, actually, uh, verse number five, it says, and, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter in, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of un unbelief. So he starts off verse number six by saying that there remaineth, or meaning there is space for some to enter in. And why is there space or why is there this opportunity for some to enter in? Because those that first heard the word of God, first heard the, the opportunity of the promised land or of this rest, didn't enter in. Now that gives us two, um, actually three different pictures here. Number one, it takes us back historically as the Jews that were set free from Egypt when God gave them the promise or the, the opportunity to go to the promised land, they chose not to believe. And because of their unbelief, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and they died off and only two uh, entered in. I mentioned those yesterday. Those were uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb. And uh, um, not even Moses entered in to the promised land. And so how important it is for us to, to truly trust God's word. But so there, there remaineth an opportunity for that next generation to enter into that promised land. But not only that, but the Jews in general. In the Old Testament, God focused so heavily on the Jews. And he wanted to show them the word of God and, and bring his people to him. Oftentimes, if you read the Old Testament, you'll find this phrase, I will be your God and you will be my people. In fact, the Psalm, Psalm 95 that we just read, we see that, that phrase given that, that he is our God and we are his, his people in his pasture. And that is, that is a picture of, of, of um, God's people and God trying to call his people to him. However, the Jews rejected God too long. They rejected his word for too long. And we start to see God reaching out to other uh, outside of, of the Jewish nation. We see that it with Nineveh, as Jonah goes and reaches out 
to Nineveh, and 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 he brings those people uh, in, uh, into his rest, if you will. We see that uh, begin to trickle in through the. Uh, um, uh, through the New Testament, as we see disciples going out into the Gentile countries and leading people to Christ. And so, praise God, I thank God that there was an opportunity for me to enter into that rest, and which leads us to us uh, as well. Uh, and and the, third, the third picture of that, uh, of that is, while multiple people have heard this gospel preached, there's going to come a time where people will no longer be able to endure sound doctrine and Jesus will come back and when he comes back those that have heard before the Bible says that God will shut up their ears they will no longer be able to receive the word of God and within the tribulation time there those that have not received or have not heard the word of God will then receive an opportunity to hear the word of God and uh, there was still that opportunity there and so we see three levels of this opportunity or this this uh, um, remaining uh, um, population, if you will, to enter into this rest. Um, verse number seven, he says, again, he limited a certain day saying in David, today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. And once again, this is a call back to Psalm 95, uh, where David said this, this, those very same words. But once again, to reiterate this, let's be careful. Let's, as verse number one says, let's fear or consider, consider our heart. As I've made mention, take inventory of your heart so that we don't miss out on this rest that God is giving to us. And then lastly, I want to, I want to wrap up in verse number eight. It says this, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he had not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Now, we see here in verse number eight, it says, for if Jesus. Now, as we're reading this, remember, the theme of Hebrews is Jesus is better. And always keep that thought in your mind. Jesus is better. Jesus will always offer a better rest, a better uh, promise, a better uh, word, a better, uh, uh, um, you know, he's a better prophet, a better follower, a better leader. He's better in every aspect. And remember, he's trying to teach the Jews this. But within the translation here, the translation is actually, for if this Joshua Say, oh, pastor, there's something wrong with the Bible. It says Jesus here. No, 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 no. It, it's, the, it's correctly written here because they're interchangeable. Now, that doesn't mean Joshua is Jesus, but Joshua was a Jesus type. He was a picture. And here, what Joshua couldn't do with his, uh, uh, with his promised land, Jesus could do with a better rest. And, and praise God for that, because I tell you what, uh, as great as it, as it is to have your own land, to have your own place where you can call home, uh, I, I live in the Bay Area of California. It is one of the most expensive areas in all the world. Uh, our rents, uh, we pay more for rent than most people pay for a mortgage. And in fact, we can, if, if we took our rent and we went just even outside of the Bay Area, we could have, we could purchase a beautiful, big home. But that's not where God has us. And how exciting would it be to have a home of our own? But can I tell you what's more important than having land and a home of your own? To be able to have a land that will last forever. To be able to have a home that will last forever, a country that will last forever. And that's the only thing that Jesus can provide. And so as it says here in verse number eight, for if Jesus had given them rest, uh, he, he's calling back to Joshua and what he did in chapter three of that promise that was given to them in that land. But he's also saying, hey, Jesus has a better rest for you. And I hope today in the midst of everything that's going on, maybe, hey, Parents, maybe you are just up to your, your, your wit's end with trying to teach your kids. I, me, me and my wife right now, there is a struggle more for her than me. There is a struggle 
trying to maintain work and making sure that the house and everything that needs to be done and then also teaching the kids, especially when they don't get it and then we don't get it. We're looking at third grade math, fifth grade math, or not fifth grade, uh, eighth grade math and we're sitting there going, uh, I don't know what. For me, I'm looking at first grade going, I don't know. Uh, but I tell you what, it, it can be a struggle and you can get overwhelmed. Do you know what we need is rest. When you're looking at the news and as, as you hear all these different reports of, uh, of this celebrity getting uh, the virus and, and possibly extending, I think our president said that we're extending into April 30th. And uh, um, by the way, praise God for that. that what, a, what a great timeline for us, even though it's not where I necessarily would want it. Uh, I, I thank God that our leadership of our country, whether you like them or not, has at least given us a timeline where we can uh, where we can hope for something to happen. But uh, even in that, you could say, oh, another 30 days of sheltering in place or another 30 days of not being able to, uh, to, to go out and do the things that we need to do. And as a pastor, I tell you what, that, that was as excited as I was of receiving the timeline. It was kind of a shot to the stomach because I want to meet with my church this Sunday. I want to be able to have Easter in our church and, and be able to dress up and have our Easter egg hunt and to be able to do all the things that we normally do. Our potlucks, oh, I'm going to miss them. But can I tell you something? You know what's more important is rest. And, uh, uh, yep, I, I, I see it. Eric is learning taxes. Wow, send them my way when he, when, when he finally learns it. Uh, that's awesome. And, yes, the struggle is definitely real. Um, but it's so important this, this morning, if I, can, if I can give you anything, any application from this passage, number one, I want you to understand what this rest is. It is peace with God. Uh, you can go pillow your head at night understanding that you are at peace with God if you put your faith in him. But not only that, it's freedom, freedom to serve, freedom to sing, freedom in salvation. It's, it's blessing. Uh, uh, it's the blessing of faith. To be able to know that when I put my faith in him, God will always bless me. Now, I'm not, when I say that, please understand, I'm not saying you're going to get rich. Uh, anyone that says you're going to get rich or you're not going to get sick or that they can, they can cast out these, they, they, don't listen to them. It's foolish. God, God's will will, will, will be the uh, decider of that. But understand, God will always bless us. And then... It says this, that uh, he, not only will he give us blessing in our faith, but he'll give us, a, we'll be in the center of God's will to know that your life has purpose and not just purpose within the confines of time, but purpose within eternity. Think about that. Your life, whether you live for, for uh, 70, 80 years, whether you live for 40 years, whether you live for 20 years, whether you live for just a few years, your life can have purpose for eternity. And then, not only that, but ultimately heaven. How important it is for us to understand that this rest leads to heaven. And that not only is this rest uh, has all these attributes, but understand there's still an opportunity for you to enter in this rest. Christians, you may be saved. You may have that ultimate place of rest, but we may need rest right now. We may need God to help us right now in the midst of everything. And if you're not saved, if you don't know 100% sure you're on your way to heaven, can I implore you, can I beg you to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ? because he can provide a better rest than you'll ever know. And uh, how important it is for us to get that this morning. I wanna have a word of prayer with you and, uh, and then we'll uh, go on with our day here. Um, I want you to do me a favor before we have a word of prayer. I want you to uh, get, send some questions my way for tomorrow's question and answer. Uh, I'd love to be able to answer some questions for you. And uh, I think that'll, that'll be good a good break in our devotional time. So tomorrow will be Q&A time. And so, and then every 
comment here. I'm going to randomly, in fact, I probably won't even, I probably won't even look at who, who did the comment, but I'll be sending some uh, Starbucks gift cards your way for those that have commented and shared. Uh, sharing only gives you a second opportunity to win, so go ahead and do that. But I figure I'd throw a little fun into this uh, this devotion. All right, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, and then I'll let you go. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your goodness to us. I thank you for your word. And Lord, I want to praise you for the rest that you provide for us, even in the midst of things that are so overwhelming. Uh, Lord, I want, to, I want to just thank you for providing rest, peace that passeth all understanding, the ability to sing praises to your name and to serve you uh, and not be overwhelmed with, with everything that's going on, but understand that I'm in the center of your will. And to see the blessings that you give as I live in this in this rest and, and continue to, to do all that I can do. And then when my life ends, ends over, that you will ultimately take me to my final rest in heaven. We love you and thank you for your goodness. Lord, I pray for prosperity for those that are... are uh, um, those that are watching, those that are working, Lord, I pray for them. Lord, I pray that you would uh, put your, your hedge of protection around all of those that are on the front lines uh, working and, and doing all they can to provide for us that uh, are, are at home sheltering in place. And Lord, I pray that you would allow us to commune again together. We love you now in your gracious, most holy name. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to like this video, share it with others. And uh, my wife always laughs at that because she says I sound like a YouTuber. And so, uh, and I, I really do. I, I hate it. But uh, make sure you, you, you do that. I love you. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless.